Guns Akimbo is an out there video game-ish styled most dangerous game kind of take where basically you just have two people fighting to the death. Um, that's it's very quirky. Um, it's got some questionable humor in it, but it's it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, and it might be worth the watch. <clears throat> Guns of Kimbo stars uh, Daniel Radcliffe uh, playing the main character along with a couple other bit players. Um, they're people I didn't really know or recognize, to be honest. Um, but generally, the acting in the film is okay. Uh, what it is, it's basically kind of an um, alternate future where there's this online streaming live feed death match between two people that are basically, you know, escaped criminals or something like that. Uh, one of the main characters it shows is a, a woman named Nix. She's escaped from a mental hospital is how they bill her. And she basically is just going through killing all of the other competitors in this styled game. While Dunder Radcliffe's character is basically like a low-level COG programmer who are coder who works for some cheesy little iOS uh, iPhone style handheld game company hates his life so he goes and starts trolling this website where people where it's streaming this live death match between people and just is like going at it talking all kinds of noise when they tell him to stop he's like basically kiss my ass ha 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 and then they show up you know an image of his IP address and basically say we're gonna get you you little shit and that's what happens. They end up getting him. They, you know, they bolt a couple guns to a uh, gun to each one of his hands, where all he has is, you know, his hands are tied to the gun, so that's all he can do. And the whole rest of the film is basically him trying to escape or get out of this game that's going on while being chased by the Knicks character who's been assigned to kill him, along with the police who are after him, who are also trying to stop this game from occurring and are after him because he's running around with two guns on his hands. And it's it's very kooky, to say the least. It's one of those ones where there's not a lot of character development or anything like that. It's clearly just a shoot 'em up kind of film and that all of the characters are either there firing guns for a few moments, uh, spinning off one-liners here and there, or just kind of existing to be pawns to be moved around. There's a few deaths that happen in the film that are really kind of quick and you almost don't see them coming, but when you look at it, because it is very kind of straightforward in terms of how the film is unfolding, you know, he gets the guns down on his hands, he doesn't want to participate with it, he has a close call with the cops, he gets rescued by his ex-girlfriend who runs away from him when she sees the guns, he then ends up getting um, in another gunfight with this chick. He runs away. He stumbles upon some bad guys doing a drug deal. Nick shows up, kills all of them. The police show up. He runs away, then ends up getting caught by some police. When one of the police ends up turning and shooting the other cop in the head to show that the makers of the game was infiltrated deeper and further than you could possibly imagine. And then it turns out that not very um, unexpectedly, the cop that was killed is the father of Nix, who then Daniel Radcliffe uses that information to get Nix to turn to his side, and then they have a moment where they have to pretend that Daniel Radcliffe's been shot, but he's wearing a bulletproof vest and he's not dead, and he's carried back in, and then Nix slips in to this holding place where all these crazy, like, just like, um, I don't know what they are exactly. They're like kind of like alternative punk looking folks, a lot of leather, a lot of weird hairstyles, a lot of tattoos. They're holed up in there. And, you know, then once they broke in, they all just start shooting and killing each other. A couple fingers get cut off. They kind of make a couple motion about using a cut off middle finger to say F you. And it's it's kind of a mess, but it's it's one of those ones that is, if it's something you like, you'll like the style of film. If it's not something that you like, if you don't like this kind of um, meta-ish kind of approach to, you know, to a film where they kind of speak outside of the film and make commentary on it while leading you through it in a way, that happens a lot in this film. And it, it kind of is like, yeah, not necessarily needed, not, not so much my cup of tea. Um, would I recommend the film? And yeah, like I said, it's, if you like stuff that's quirky, it's uh, I saw that it was you know made by someone from New Zealand, so it has that New Zealander style humor, that Kiwi humor in it. And if you like any shows from over there, you'll probably like this film a little bit better um, than if you you know you're from somewhere and you don't like the style of filmmaking that goes over in New Zealand. 
and you probably won't like this film that much because it is kind of just kind of odd and out there and all over the place. It's not really tied down to anything specific other than just the you know the very thin narrative of guy kidnaps guy, puts him in the game, and then he's got to find a way to get back in the end or kill the guy that put him in the game. And it's like, eh, okay. But would I recommend it? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I would say no. Uh, in most cases, most people aren't going to like this movie. But, you know, like I said, if you like some some Kiwi humor, you'll like this one. If, um, you know, you don't, then you probably won't like this at all. Other than that, uh, thank you. Feel free to like, subscribe, share, and have a good day.